Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. Disney MGM Studios opened on May 1st, 1989, and was Walt Disney World's third theme park at the resort. It was built over the course of three years and cost the company over $500 million to build. With today's inflation, that's approximately $1 billion. The park's overall design was inspired by the golden age of Hollywood in the 1930s and 1940s, and was also designed to be a working film studio in addition to the theme park. This is the map from opening day. All of the purple buildings were part of the production studio, and everything else was the theme park, which was a very small portion of the 135-acre park. Well, since opening as Disney MGM Studios, the park has seen many changes, including the name change to Disney's Hollywood Studios in 2008, and the loss of the working studio aspect through the late 90s into the early 2000s. As of recently, the park has become a shell of its former self. It used to be a place where Hollywood came alive and you could experience the movies and feel like you were a part of the action. It was an exciting park to visit, so we're going to relive the prime of Disney MGM Studios. Through the video, we'll be looking at the park's history, and we'll refer to it as Disney MGM Studios where necessary. So today, we're going to be counting down the top 10 Disney's Hollywood Studios secrets and facts. Number 10. The Crossroads When you walk into Disney's Hollywood Studios, one of the very first things you'll see after you pass through the turnstiles is the Crossroads of the World Monument. This opened with the park in May of 1989, and did you know that this is almost a full-scale replica of the original Crossroads Monument in Los Angeles? Built in 1936, the original sits outside of what is said to be the first shopping mall of America off Sunset Boulevard. At Disney's Hollywood Studios, the monument sits outside Hollywood Boulevard and is the exact size and scale of the original, but has one major difference. Mickey Mouse. That's right, the Disney version features a statue of Mickey Mouse on the top of the spinning globe, and he's actually there on double duty. Not only is Mickey the company's icon, Mickey's right ear, which is actually made out of copper, doubles as a lightning rod to protect guests from that inclement Florida weather. Number 9. A Universal Idea When Disney MGM Studios opened in 1989, the main attraction at the park was the Backlot Tour. The attraction used to be a combination of a tram and walking tour that lasted over two hours, a much longer experience than the 30-minute tour the attraction closed with in 2014. It would take guests through the streets of America, through the residential street, and into the iconic Catastrophe Canyon. So let's rewind back a bit. In 1982, while Michael Eisner was the current CEO of Paramount Studios, he was approached by Universal to join their theme park project in Orlando. Eisner declined, but while he stepped into the CEO position at Disney in 1984, he was very knowledgeable on the details of the Universal Studios Orlando theme park. This included the headliner attraction that was supposed to be a tram tour and would feature an earthquake scenario like what opened in Universal Studios Hollywood in 1988. While looking at Catastrophe Canyon in Disney MGM Studios, you can definitely see the similarities to the earthquake attraction at Universal Studios. So you could say Eisner borrowed this idea from Universal Studios. Catastrophe Canyon was demolished in February of 2016 to make way for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Number 8. Walt's Airplane on October 8, 1992, an airplane touched down on World Drive in Orlando and found a home on the back lot at Disney MGM Studios. Well, this aircraft, which went by the name of The Mouse, was in fact Walt Disney's actual airplane and holds a lot of Disney history. Walt Disney bought the Grumman Gulfstream 1 in 1964, and in addition to transporting Imagineers from California to New York in preparation for the 1964 New York World's Fair, it's also said that it was responsible for going on secret missions flying over Florida, scouting land for Project X, which would then become Walt Disney World. Well, here's the problem. Walt's decision to locate Project X in Florida was made in 1963, but this aircraft was purchased in 1964. Well, it turns out the decision was made on the Beechcraft Queen Air, another aircraft the company owned at the time. 
The mouse may have very well been used to scout out specifics of the land after the fact, but it's not where the initial decision was made to locate to Florida. Now, as of 2016, the entire backlot section of Disney Hollywood Studios, like we mentioned before, has been demolished to make way for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. This includes a spot where Walt's airplane found its home for almost 25 years. So now the question becomes, what's actually happened to Walt Disney's airplane and this piece of Disney history? Well, it's honestly a mystery, since no one in the Disney community, aside from Disney themselves, knows the actual location of the plane. What is known is that it was repainted to the original orange and white color scheme it used to have, and was removed intact from Disney's Hollywood Studios. It's rumored that now it's in the hands of the Disney archives, but who knows where it might pop up someday. Number 7. The Key Under the Mat Muppet Vision 3D opened at Disney's Hollywood Studios on May 16, 1991. A major part of the attraction is its queue and pre-show, which includes a lot of details, gags, and theming that will definitely keep you entertained. As you enter the front doors of the attraction, on the right hand side there's a security booth with a sign that says back in 5 minutes, key is under mat. Well because it's Disney where no little detail goes unnoticed, if you lift the mat on the floor, you will in fact find a gold key. Now the key screwed into the ground, so don't get your hopes up of trying to take it home as a souvenir, but it's another little secret that makes Disney attractions stand out from the rest. Number 6. The Chinese Theater As you walk down Hollywood Boulevard, you can't help but notice the Chinese Theater. It's kind of like the Cinderella Castle of Hollywood Boulevard. But did you know that the theater is an exact full-scale replica of the Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood? It's actually one of the very few replica buildings in Walt Disney World that's built to the exact scale. Disney Imagineers used the original blueprints from the theater in California to build their theater at Disney MGM Studios. Imagineers took numerous reference pictures of exterior details to match everything as close as possible from the doors right down to the stone food dogs at the theater's entrance. After the Florida theater was built, the owners from California asked Imagineers for their blueprints so they could be used for the theater's renovation since they were going to be more up to date with building codes. So the Florida blueprints of the replica were used for the California renovation of Grauman's Chinese Theater. Actually, Disney wasn't able to secure licensing rights to use the Grauman's name, so from the park opening until now, the theater is simply referred to as just the Chinese Theater. Number 5. The Largest Hidden Mickey Hidden Mickeys can be found all over the Walt Disney World Resort. Now for those of you that don't know, Hidden Mickeys are representations of Mickey Mouse found in designs of pretty much anything at the Disney resorts. They're typically made up of three circles creating the silhouette of Mickey Mouse. Well, did you know that Disney's Hollywood Studios is home to the largest Hidden Mickey at Walt Disney World? That's right, and it's a hidden Mickey that you won't really be able to see from in the park. You sort of need to be above it. When Disney MGM Studios was built, a giant hidden Mickey was designed right into the park's central hub through the buildings and landscaping. Do you see it? The Chinese theater is Mickey's mouth, Echo Lake was the right ear, the roof of the Brown Derby restaurant was the left ear, and the planters and trees were his eyes and eyebrows. Now every day, thousands of people walk right by all these things, not even knowing they're part of the largest hidden Mickey. Now over the years, with expansion and just the overall evolution of the park, you can see that the Mickey silhouette is slowly becoming harder to make out, but it's still a cool little feature incorporated into the design of the theme park. Number 4. Studios A and B Rock and Roller Coaster opened in July of 1999 and is definitely a thrilling attraction. In the ride's queue while waiting to tour Studio C, try to listen to the sounds coming from the doors of Studio A and B. You'll hear sounds from real Aerosmith recording sessions. Some of the sounds even came from the recording sessions for the attraction at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Also while you're in Studio C watching the pre-show, Take a look at the ground of the recording studio to spot a hidden Mickey. The wires by the rack of guitars are coiled up into the silhouette of Mickey Mouse. Number 3. Theater of the Stars Beauty and the Beast Live on Stage opened on November 22, 1991 at Disney MGM Studios playing in the Theater of the Stars. 
The current theater can be found off Sunset Boulevard, but the Sunset Boulevard expansion opened in July of 1994, and Beauty and the Beast opened in 1991. So how can this be? Well, that's because where Theater of the Stars is today isn't the original theater. The original actually opened with the park on May 1st, 1989, and was located where Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood Boulevard meet today. This theater didn't have covered seating, but the stage design and circular proscenium arch was very similar to what's there today. Since the entire park is based on Hollywood, its design inspiration seems to have come from the Hollywood Bowl Amphitheater located in Los Angeles, California. From the park opening until when Beauty and the Beast opened, the theater was home to a couple stage shows about Hollywood that featured many of your favorite Disney characters. In September of 1993, Theater of the Stars closed while the Sunset Boulevard expansion was being completed. In September of 1993, Beauty and the Beast was temporarily relocated to the Premier Theater in the backlot section of the Streets of America. The show played the Premier Theater until July of 1994, when it reopened at the newly built Theater of the Stars on Sunset Boulevard. Stop! Stop it, I say! Do you hear me? Number 2. Don't Pull the Rope so the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular officially opened on August 25th, 1989, almost three months after the theme park opened. The show takes place in an amphitheater-type venue, but the experience actually begins outside of the theater. So you know how we're always told to not do something, but we do it anyways because we want to know what would happen? Well, Disney knew this would be the case when designing elements for Disney MGM Studios. So outside of the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, there's an archaeological dig site with a sign that reads, Warning, Do Not Pull Rope. But you'll notice that the knot is crossed out. Well, next time you're at the park, go ahead and give that rope a couple pulls, and you'll learn that there's some people down in that excavation site. I say, you're not for rope, old chap. You're jolly good sport there. Number 1. Moroccan Pink the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror opened at Disney's Hollywood Studios in July of 1994. As part of the Sunset Boulevard expansion, the Hollywood Tower Hotel is a 199-foot building with a pinkish-brownish facade. But have you ever wondered about that pinkish color on the hotel? Why that exact color? Well, Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios are very close in proximity. Since they built Tower of Terror just one foot under the Florida Building Code, the Imagineers knew it would be visible from parts of Epcot. If you've looked across the World Showcase Lagoon at the Morocco Pavilion from the right angle, you've probably completely missed it. When you look at the buildings in Morocco, they have a very similar color scheme and architecture design to the Tower of Terror. So to solve the problem of seeing the ride from Epcot, they designed the attraction to blend right into the Morocco Pavilion so it appears like it's part of the architecture. Now, as of today, Disney's Hollywood Studios is going through a lot of changes, specifically with the construction of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, as well as Toy Story Land and the new Mickey and Minnie attraction. There's also rumors that the name of the park will be changed once again for the third time. So the question for you today is, how do you feel about the loss of so much history at the former Disney MGM Studios? Do you have any favorite memories or stories from the park? Leave a comment down below and start a conversation. If you have any videos from the Disney parks that you'd like to share with us to be used in future videos, follow the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Click the TPM icon on the screen to subscribe to this channel and check out some of these other videos, which we're sure you'll like.